Welcome to today's segment of What Millionaires Spend Their Money On. We are here with Rod Higgins. He's played 13 years in the league, seven with the Golden State Warriors. He was an assistant coach to the Warriors, assistant GM for the Washington Wizards. Rod Higgins, what is your biggest challenge being a GM? Well, the biggest challenge, you know, is obviously to put a successful basketball team on the court. And it comes over the period of time where it's via a draft, a trade, um, you know, just acquiring a free agent that you know that will come in here and make a big input on your team. But at the end of the day, you want to have that team going into the right direction. You know, I like the way our team is right now. Um, I think there are a lot of young guys as well as young veteran type players to help us move forward. Um, you know, and when, in this business, you're often critiqued. And you know you're going to be um, looked upon to say, what have you done in your tenure? And uh, that's probably one of the biggest things. Obviously, the biggest thing is uh, to be successful. Being a GM, I'm sure in the organization, you guys help the players as far as who and who not to associate themselves with, mm -hmm. where or where they should not go, mm -hmm. uh, recommend places for them to live. Do you guys have someone to advise them on how to make sound investments with their money? Well, usually what happens with a player nowadays, they're almost like a, a um, sole entity. They have come in with an enterprise situation where they have an agent, they have a financial advisor, they might even have people that take care of their personal business day to day. So they're pretty well in tune to what they need to do in terms of um, getting their rest, um, eating right, conditioning, things of that nature. Um, the NBA as a whole, I think, does a very good job in helping young players with our de developmental program where we would come out and help the younger kids to find a place to stay, to find a place to shop, um, just helping them with day-to-day -day stuff that maybe they not, some of the guys don't have as opposed to other guys. Some guys maybe that are high first-round draft choices might come in with their, their you know, the infrastructure already there, but maybe a free agent or a second round pick might not um, have those same uh, resources. So we try to help them out as much as we can. But the NBA, as well as the, the individual teams, they really try to work together that way. How is it for a free agent signing or someone being traded, how difficult is the transition for them to be traded from one team to another? Is it really that much of a shock for them to up and uproot their families and come somewhere where they haven't been before? It probably depends on the individual and the individual situation. A lot of times what happens is, you know, a guy can get traded and maybe he's just spent six months in that particular team, but there are instances where a guy is going to spend maybe 10 or 12 years with the team maybe and, and gets traded, and it's probably a little bit tougher for him than it is for that guy that stayed with the team for, for six months. Uh, I would imagine that um, any time an individual probably gets traded for a t from a team, he might be a little bit surprised. But by the same token, in this business, um, you don't take it personal. You you try to move on. Uh, don't take it to heart, you know, because it's a it's a big time business. Being a player in a league, to a coach, now GM, how hard is it when you have to tell someone that you built? A relationship that they've been traded. Wow, that's that's a varying question, obviously, because of like you you pointed out, um, maybe the friendship aspect comes into play, um, and it is a little bit tougher maybe for a guy that you have a friendship with, you you've seen grow as a, a youngster into a man, um, but most of the time it's just the business aspect of um, what the NBA is all about. Oftentimes, you see turnover in this league with players moving from team to team at a, at a dramatic rate. Sometimes it's a, at a lower rate, but it happens. It happens every year, um, and it's probably going to happen again probably in the next couple of months. That's just the way the league is and because we're always trying to find that way sitting in the, sit, sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in. Guys like me are trying to find a way to improve your team. Being that you were a player, uh -huh. coach, and now GM, does today's players work as hard as they did when you were playing? Oh, I, I definitely think so. I think, um, you know, each era is a little bit different in terms of talent. But the thing about getting into the league, 
oftentimes it's a dream of a player. When you dream of something and you in, uh, inspire, aspire to do something at a high level, you're going to work your tail off to get to that level. Um, and today's players are no different than you know the era that I played in. You know, I had some great players that played it in the 80s, um, early 90s that you know I can identify with because of you know the ability to play against them. But the players today are uh, just like those players, and probably the players before me and before um, you know when the league first started. You see the talent level obviously changes every year. You see a guy maybe or years uh, as they progress. You see guys that do phenomenal things with that ball in their hand, with their athleticism. But in terms of you know players working hard, I definitely think they work just as hard as when I was a, a player. When and where did you and Michael Jordan become the best of friends? Wow. Um, Michael came into the league in 1984. That was my third year in the league in Chicago. I was with the Chicago Bulls. He came in as a rookie, drafted in that draft. And, um, you know, going through training camp, we had an opportunity to, you know, get a chance to know one another. Um, and then um, we ended up um, being almost like roommates because our homes were really close. Uh, you know, our backyards were really close to each other. So we, you know, we kind of like carpooled together. And, and then I left Chicago after that 84, 85 season. And then we just became, you know, really close that way, um, talking on the phone and getting to, um, to know each other. And then obviously both of us having families and then families get a chance to know each other. And that's kind of how the relationship started um, that way. Um, you know, the basketball side is one thing of the, of the man, but, you know, he's a, he's a unique individual, you know, just off the basketball court. What is it that you want that money can't buy? I think that's the easy answer. Anytime you can have your health, um, you know, that's, that's all you would ask for. What charities are you affiliated with? I've been affiliated with and still to this day, the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I do my um, basketball camp back in Chicago every year um, that benefits um, the um, Boys and Girls Club of Harvey, Illinois. Um, I do it through my church. So those are, are my pets right there. Well, thank you for taking out the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Good luck for the rest of the season. Okay. And, uh, Good luck to you. All right, thanks. All right.